Good morning. Today is Wednesday, October 9th, 10 a.m., and we're here at the Akushnet Council on Aging. We're um, in the art room today Great. instead of the library. Okay. Uh, we have a live video and audio going on, and you'll be able to watch us on channel 18. Okay. Uh, also, a recording of the meeting will be posted on the town Akushnet YouTube channel. Uh, we need a vote to open the meeting. Make a motion. Okay, Paula and Deb. Hey, can I just update that it's August 9th? Oh, what did they say? October. Oh, thank you. That's okay. I get oh, October. Oh, already August. been all Me too. I'm ready for anniversary. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm in costume already. Yeah, so. Two years. All right. Um, we do not, we have a vote to open the meeting, and we do not have any mail uh, to talk about today. Uh, we do have the minutes of the meeting from June 14th, and those need to be approved. Did everyone get a chance to read through them? Yes. Um, may I have a motion to approve those minutes? Yes. Yeah. Approve. And Second. all that again. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about the big type. I don't know what happened there. No, that's good. <laughs> um, now, I would like to ask the board if we can please uh, take the agenda out of order because we have a guest today, uh, Cameron, and um, we want to discuss that and we want to uh, discuss her um, concern with transportation. So I need a vote to take the meeting. So moved. Uh, so moved, okay. And I, everyone in favor? Sure. Yes. Aye, 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 aye. 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 Okay. So, now, Karen is our resident and she has a concern about transportation. Karen, would you like to speak for us and then I, I can ask I Kevin to address this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Karen Jabril Raymond. I've been a lifelong resident of Cushnet. Mine's two years. I was two years old when I moved here, but I don't remember any of that, so it doesn't count. So I consider myself a lifelong resident. Um, uh, I do want to say first that I'm really lucky to have the COA here in Kushnet and to utilize some of the services. Uh, I do utilize the van quite often because I have epilepsy amongst other things. Um, and I will say that the drivers are totally awesome. We have two drivers. Uh, we have uh, Marcel who's totally awesome and uh, I'm losing his name. Um, Roger, Roger. Roger, right. He's totally awesome too. They always strike up a conversation. You don't feel like you're on a busy van and just sit there, shut your mouth. You know, they always strike up a conversation. So it's a nice ride and I really appreciate them. So I do want to start it off with something really positive because that, that's been a very positive experience for me. Um, second thing I wrote um, down, if you have a copy of my little. Does everybody, my little does everybody have a copy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, okay. The board responsibility and functions. I'm not really sure mm -hmm. what the functions or responsibilities of the board are. I'm not sure if they're here in, in capacity to uh, make judgments or make policy, or are they advisory board, or are they simply here as an audience to watch what happens in the at the meetings. I'm not sure what the, your role is. So I'm not really sure who I should be speaking to. I know I'm the other director, so. No, but this is a good step. They're an advisory board. They're not policy making, but I think this is a good first step. Okay. All right, I see. Um, let's see. Transportation and scheduling. I've read through, which I, which you should all have, yeah. the transportation schedule. Oh, I don't have my Do you need a copy? I have a highlighter. Anyone have a highlighter? Oh, okay. um, so in the first paragraph, um, I want to bring your attention to the last sentence that says, CLA strives to provide essential transportation for those in our community who do not drive and do not have family members available to assist them. So I am one of those people. I know I'm not alone, but I am one of those people because I can't drive. I probably won't drive for the rest of my life, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. And it's life-altering, it's life-changing, and it's, it's lonely. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um, the second part I'd like to bring your attention to is the next paragraph, first sentence. It says, the COA utilizes two town wheelchairs, which I know not, they're not both working, to transport residents Resident seniors and 
those with disabilities. So my question here at this second part right now is, it says resident seniors and those with disabilities. So the way I'm reading this is, all residents who are seniors can utilize the van, and we have other residents who are not seniors who are disabled. Can they utilize the van? Yes. We haven't had any requests. But yes, we have. From, yeah, Katie. From okay, we don't Compulsive don't Salon. Don't need <laughs> Katie from Compulsive Salon was told she couldn't ride the van. She has epilepsy like me. She hasn't had a license for years. Okay, so when did that happen? Uh, maybe three, four months ago. Okay. So I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, so I didn't know who was aware. No, was we, it's so a senior is considered anybody over the age of 50. And someone with that. Excuse me. We're on open. Right, so we should And we, we need to discuss this later because we're talking about other people's medical right. conditions. So we not, need to talk about okay. this later. Okay, so let's not use names. But in that situation, anyone over the age of 50 is considered a senior in a question. But do you have to be a senior or can you just have a disability? If you have diagnosed disability, we, we, we've transported people over as long okay. as you have to be over the age of 21 for liability issues. Yeah. But yeah, if there's a diagnosed disability, we will transport. We have before. Okay. Because so. uh, she was very savage. Yeah, that's in terms well, Somebody must have been in error then. Someone that was an error, yeah. Error. That yeah. was that was absolutely on us if that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. It yeah. may it probably wasn't you, it could have been I don't tend to answer the phone, so I don't know who she spoke yeah. to. We again we're not gonna get to names, matter. but that, that should not have been. But happened. I can call her and say yeah, absolutely. reapply. Yeah. Okay. And we'll that do a little retraining at the desk. We do have new staff. So yeah, good. Good. Um the the third and most important thing is Seniors must provide COA office with all necessary information as soon as they know. So I have been told various circumstances under which are not my control that I cannot ride the bus. If I call on a Wednesday, I can't ride till the following week because the schedule is made up on Friday and the rule is to wait a week. And, and that is not always possible for certain situations say if I were to go to the doctor, because I have a fungus in my lungs, it doesn't matter because I'm talking about me. And so I, I get pneumonia very often, so I have to get to the doctor immediately, and then they send me to my specialist who then puts me on medicine, etc. They may send me for a stress test. So all of these things happen within a week, week and a half, but I have to wait a week and a half before I can start. So we do, I do know that the van is available only from 8 to 12 every morning and that most of the time uh, the schedule is done on Friday and that it's, so the, it, the drivers know when they're going where and know when their days off are because there may not be anything scheduled. So I've called all the surrounding towns and their COAs, I've called Mattapoiset, Marion, Fairhaven, I think Dartmouth, New Bedford. Uh, I think it's Rochester that has five vans. I find that hard to believe. They told me they had five working vans and they're always going. So as soon as you know, get that information in and we will try and squeeze you somewhere in the schedule. New Bedford's booked a month in advance, but that doesn't mean anything. Call when you know and we will try and get you in. We will do the best we can. Uh, every single COA said that. The other one that didn't said, Marion didn't have a policy. They just said, Call us as soon as you know and we'll get you there <laughs> if we can. Matter of it has a problem with drivers. So a lot of them are on vacation. So they said it usually takes us two days to find somebody who can do it. So, but if it's the same day, it's okay, we'll take you. So we're the only ones, and it's, I don't see it in the policy, but with, I'm, I, I can say that I know that every time I've called, I've been denied until the following week, no matter what day it is. I'm going to disagree with you there. Because we're talking about you, I'll use an example. You called Monday to change where you wanted to be dropped off after this meeting. And we called back and said that, yeah, we could accommodate that. Oh, that's because I was told, I didn't know this, that I was getting picked up at 10 after 10. And I knew I wouldn't be done. No, you've been on the schedule since 9.30. We need to talk about who you're talking about. No, 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 no. no, my pickup was 9.30. Right. The meeting right. starts at 10. Right. The van had to take me and leave me here. Correct. Because she he's on a run with somebody else right now. If I couldn't leave by 10 after 10, he couldn't give me That's a ride. That's not what she said to you. I heard the conversation. She said that after the meeting, 
if you that you couldn't after the meeting we had to leave to take you to where you wanted to go. Right. I heard the conversation. That's yes. not what she said. She said that you just couldn't hang out after the meeting. You had to leave after the meeting to go where you wanted to go because we have someone to pick up a Hawthorne Medical. Right. So, but that and that was this Monday. That was two yes. days ago, and we said I, yes to that. And I said no. I don't want the I don't want the ride because I won't be done at ten after ten. She never said ten after ten. She said after the meeting. I heard the conversation. She said to you because she called you back. What time did she say the van had to leave? She didn't. She said it after the meeting. That was, I, I, I only happened to hear that conversation because I was right there. And she, we said yes to your change request, but that you had to leave after the meeting. She never said anything about 10 after 10. We're never done by 10 past 10. I, I swear that that's what I heard. And that's the only reason I changed it, because I have to pay for the sort of us. I really thought. And, but I'm the only reason I'm debating this, because I was there. I, have first, I, I personally heard that conversation. She said you had to leave after the meeting. You couldn't hang around after, because we have someone out of Hawthorne Medical right now. But right. did say yes She said that. we should have taken her to Hawthorne Medical. Right. And you have to take a bath. Correct. So, okay, so that was a misunderstanding. Yeah. And the only reason I canceled and, and is because not. I knew it wouldn't be done. So I misunderstood. Okay, but, but I'm just saying, I did, so we have made accommodations. You know what I mean? We, we try to. And if you look in our newsletter, and yes, you're, you're absolutely right, it's not in the policy. But in our newsletter, we request a week's notice. I have two per diem drivers. They don't work a set schedule like they did prior to COVID. So it's a case of us finding a driver. Like, I have a driver on vacation this week, so I'm down to one driver. Who can only do so much? So we just don't have. Oh, a I staff understand that. Like other but I've never been told. I will see if someone's available. Yeah. So I, I always feel like I'm in a bind. But I feel like there's other times we have accommodated you when you've done. That. I'm not saying I've never been accommodated. Well, you just kind of said we always said no to you. <laughs> and we have made accommodations. The other thing is the drivers. We don't open till eight o'clock. Right. So technically, the drivers don't come on the clock till eight o'clock. Right. We've picked you up sometimes before eight o'clock for an appointment. And not often, but we have. We've made that. So we have made accommodations. But I just, the drivers are for you and they don't. Prior, uh, history, and I don't mean to interrupt. Pri history for everybody. Prior to COVID, a driver worked Monday through Friday, 8 to 12. Um, all, always. Because people came in for meals, they came in for programming. That service kind of went away during COVID because we no longer do congregate meals. And People, our, I gave you, I did give every copy of the uh, policy, but if you look at our passenger breakdown for July, I think hearing you talking to we only transport five people ever for transportation. Mm -hmm. So in July, we did 20 rides. Eight of that was grocery shopping, and I did the breakdown, I mean, I don't have to read it to yeah. you. We don't have a high transportation request. So to have anything more than per diem drivers is a waste of taxpayer money. To, to pay somebody, to be on call Monday, because I have to pay the drivers two hours when they come in. So if you call me and you want one-way transportation to wherever, to Hawthorne Medical, and you say, oh, but I don't need a ride home, I still have to pay that driver two hours. Right. So that's why, just to justify why we only have per diem drivers, that's the reason. I didn't need to interrupt. That's why no, I on the history of what. No, I, I, know, I knew that you had per diem drivers, right. but um, sometimes, like when I've gone to my doctor, and the doctor says the blood count looks really bad, you need a transfusion. So now I have to walk down to the Indians and take my blood to make sure they get a perfect match. And 24 hours, that blood will come in, and I need that blood transfusion fusion tomorrow. I can't get that right because I'm not calling an hour, I mean, a week in advance. And even sometimes, like if I'm calling on a Wednesday, I can't get the following Monday because it's not a technical week. And there really isn't a reason when the schedule's not made that that couldn't be put on the schedule. And I don't think that tends to happen on Mondays and Fridays because we have transferred, and again, not to give you specifics, but Mondays and Fridays we have set clients who go to set places, so there's right. always a driver Mondays and Fridays. So I can see where that would be a problem Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but I don't think Mondays and Fridays that happen. But even on a Friday, I know they go to Trookies every Friday. Correct. And it's Trookies for me because, sorry, Jerry. No, go ahead. After you're done, I want to. I'm a vegetarian, so I can't buy much food there because right. they really don't have much for me. But I have gone to the to the chookies. And Marcel has said to me, and I know I have to call the COA, he has said to me, Karen, anytime you want to go, you don't have to be put on the schedule, but you have to call the COA and let them know I'll pick you up because they go right by your street to pick up so and so. And when I've called, I'm being told, well, if you have to have a week and a half, et cetera, et cetera. A week. But I'm told by the driver it doesn't matter. But, but if you look at our policy, the drivers don't handle it. I, I, understand I understand that and I respect that. And that shouldn't happen, and you're right. And, I'm, and you were absolutely right about that. 
But it even says in our policy the drivers don't handle transportation. And I'll tell you the reason I can justify why. Oh, I understand that. The, the reason I need to know where my vans are. You've seen our vans. Our vans are in deplorable shape. If you, I mean, well, the exhaust fell off on one the other day. I so COA. right, but if that happens, I need, or you get into an accident. The office needs to know where you are. Oh, so I if the driver that. says, oh, you know what, I'm supposed to drop you off at home, but I'm going to drop you off at XYZ instead, we don't know the driver's derived right. from that so route. The driver needs to call and tell No, them. you need to. It's in our policy. You you tell, you tell schedule with the office and never okay. the driver. Okay. Just because we, for safety. If you have an accident, I need to know where you are. Yeah. 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 It's a liability issue, too. And it's yeah. more, yeah. And that's everything nowadays, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Like so when I go to the doctor and they say, here, I called in a prescription for you, I can't get it that day because I haven't ordered it. All right. And if, if we can accommodate, we will, but sometimes... That's what I'm can. trying to say is, can I call and say, I'm coming from a doctor, they left a prescription for me at CVS, can we stop on the way home or is he going somewhere else? If he's not going in anywhere else, I'm being told no because you didn't get it in advance for over a week. My concern with that, Karen, and, and let me just, and I'm not trying to fight you, please don't take it that way. My concern is where do we draw the line? What's to stop, okay, so that makes sense to me. The prescription I think we should talk about. I think that makes sense. What's to stop resident X from calling me and saying, I need beer and cigarettes after my doctor's appointment. Why would I say yes to you and no to that? You know, for continuity, that's where my concern is. Mm -hmm. How do we write that up without discriminating? Okay, well, I, I, then I have a, the question that I have for you is, I didn't know this, yeah. but I think in, a, in your office we talked once about uh, we don't just give medical rides. Mm -hmm. If you want to go visit a friend, you right. can go visit a friend. You, so it doesn't sound like you make judgments about where you take people. Right, but what I'm saying is so... I guess medical to me would be priority. Oh, right? absolutely. So if I'm going to try to, I guess the way I'm looking for wording, give me suggestions. Like how would I word that in a policy to say, yep, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, and Jeb, I'm only going to pick on you no, no, you're no. in front of me. No, no, no. Okay, so you need a prescription. So right. I'm going to make that effort, that same day effort, go against the policy, make the effort because medical is important. You need that. Right. But now Dan's out on the van. Dan says to me, you know, I'm an alcoholic. An alcoholic. I need beer today. Right. That's a medical diagnosis. Right. I'm sorry, I should have picked on Jerry. <laughs> 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 no, 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 do, you, do you see what, do you see what that no, line? No, you have to I'm draw. Not in other words, we are governed by law and our policies. We're not I did read the message. And that's the, and that's right. the difference. So, uh, I mean, you know, we can't accommodate everyone at every time only because our hands are tied in a lot of And I guess I'm too. willing to work with it, but give me suggestions on the wording of how to, how you would see that. You know what I mean? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that as if if need be, because of your appointment, you need to stop to another appointment or for another accommodation relating to your appointment, we will make every accommodation possible. That doesn't mean you can do it. We could do that. I mean, we're willing to work with it. I'm not here you know, to shoot this I all down. That. You know what I mean? It's just, it, I'm going to tell you, people will abuse the system. Just because we've been there, done that. You know what I mean? It's just so that's why it needs to be tight. I don't mind changing it and I don't mind working with you on this, but it needs to be tight because someone's going to play the system. Yep. And unfortunately, that's the society we live in now. I, I know I too in the past, after the, I've gone to the doctors and maybe got some bad news, and I'll say, can you just take me to the beach? And we have accommodated that. Yes. I mean, have. please give me credit yes, for that. We yes, have made accommodations yes, for you. Yes, we have. Because it makes I'm the other one on the bus, so it would make no sense. To say no, right? Because we're taking the highway anyway. So get off the highway, drop me off at the right. water, and come back here. It's it's as many miles as driving me home and coming back here. And there's nobody else on the bus, and there's no reason to say right. no because so we are. We I mean, order it we're, we're not so rigid that we never do no, anything. No, no, no. So that, that's absolutely true. They have done that for me. But as long as I call and say, "Is it okay for them to right. drop me And again, off the because bus. we need for safety wise, we need to know where they everybody right. is. So I, I would I would always call and say, is it okay? Yeah. And the drivers would say, well, COA has to know that. Yeah. So they they know. The no, the drivers go. We're we're very fortunate with our drivers. Yeah. We really are. So, uh, I'm just looking for a little bit more flexibility in more more so for medical purposes right. than than anything else. But not to say that there's anything wrong with anything else. But I understand you need to know right. at all times where everybody is. Yes. But Karen, to to address your your, your issue on on that time, um, if we're not available, right. 
and, and, and I know you know this, there's sugar on demand. I do take sugar. That will turn around and do your emergency, not no. an emergency, but your, well, yeah, you could say it would be an emergency medical response to your doctor's office because you got requested to go back there again. Absolutely not. And, well, they won't. What they will do is 24 hours in advance, they'll take me tomorrow. And that's a good thing. And 24 hours. We have a policy for seven days. There is no policy for seven well, days. Well, that's where the advisory board, which all, all we are is an advisory board, need to work with the director um, off meeting to have them uh, off of air to have a meeting to readjust our policies. Why would you need the seven days? Why would we leave it? Because again, no. Why do you need the seven because days? Because the drivers make plans. Because we have a we have a driver's issue. She has to bring a driver in, which is per diem for only two hours. Okay. We don't have the luxury as we had in the past of when we had our programs going on over here that we had a driver for, what is it, 25 or 30 20, hours a week? 20. Huh? 20. 20 hours a week. We yeah. don't have that anymore. You don't have 20 hours a week? No, no we don't. We only so have a medical appointment for 20 hours. So, the, so the seven days, what the seven days does is it gives her, Flexibility. not her, but hours. gives them the time to schedule our per diem driver to come in and to do the issues that need to be taken care of, uh, i.e. medical appointments, i.e. Uh, going to the grocery shopping, i.e. going to uh, need to go to Boston Food Banks as it was in her, her paperwork here, to do different things like that because we're only per diem. We don't have our 20 hour driver anymore from 8 to 12. Right. So we that's only what I'm have saying about Madame Poisa and Marion. Right. They don't have drivers. They, they call them and say, "Is anybody available?" That's because available? that's because they have the money for a 20-hour a week for well, a driver. No, they they get a full a, drive. No, Marion has um, what's called a fish program. It's uh, friends and help service helping. So they have volunteer drivers. It's a whole volunteer program. We don't have that. We don't have that. that Absolutely. Right. But no matter what, they're not on the schedule. They're called to say, "Are you?" <coughs> So that's what I'm asking is, but that's if, if they're not on a schedule and if they're called and if they're available, they may say, no, I have plans with my family that day. But we don't have that volunteer, program. just on that caveat, yeah, we don't have that, we don't have volunteer have drivers, nor are we going to want to do that. Only and again, right. that's a liability problem and you've got to get a clearance from the town. But you're you're looking sure. at me at that thing, but we have to look for a clearance for the town drivers. for a we're person who drive a car. Yeah, no, no, we're not going to even look at that. We we don't we're have that. volunteer that. drivers. The ones that you have. I'm talking about volunteer program. drivers. I'm yeah. not talking no, about. No, I know. I'm saying, but we don't have that program. So no, you have you have the insurance for the people that you hire. Hi. Right. Okay. Here. So that's all I'm saying is, is there anything to stop? <laughs> is there anything to stop that that process from happening? of when somebody calls and there's nothing on the schedule that day, or maybe there's somebody going to Hawthorne and I get a call, my doctor's sick, and they're going to reschedule me for the following week. Well, it's Friday, I can't make an appointment for the following week because I already did the schedule. And here you go on a Wednesday, see if you can get there. So is there anything to stop me from calling and saying, I have a reschedule for Wednesday. Is there anyone available? Yes, we'll go to Hawthorne. Sure, it will take you along. That's what I'm looking for. Or we have nothing on the schedule. I don't know if anybody's available. I'll make a call. And if they're busy or on vacation, you call me back and the answer is no, we don't have anybody. We can try to accommodate that, but the girls at the desk do so much already. And now they've picked up the senior work off program and the travel program. I can't guarantee they have the time to do that. You know what I mean? If we're, and I guess what I'm saying is if we're already running that day, then chances are, yeah, we can get you on the schedule. We can do it. If their guys aren't working, I don't know that we have time to, because first of all, the guys don't want to answer their phone if they're not working, nor do they have to. So we might not be able to get you an answer right away. Right. And uh, that, that's fair. And if they don't answer their phone, or if the answer is no, that's fair. But at least it was, a, it was an effort. Right. 
you know, because I'm looking at, you know, we strive to rise to seniors who need them, and I wasn't feeling like that part was being met. But for continuity, I can't promise you that that'll happen. I right. Three different people at the desk, they don't have time. In the morning, it, it's tough, because I'm going to say right now we had to line out the door because trans our travel program opened yesterday. We oh. barely had time to make the are you okay calls. So I can't promise, I guess yeah. I don't want to say absolutely yes, that's something and we effort. can do. Effort, does effort yes, promise. but I can't promise you that we yeah. can make that effort every single time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I can't put that into a policy that, yep, absolutely, we're going to do that every single time. Because I've got the three receptionists, sometimes they have time. Absolutely, sometimes we have time to do it. Other times, like if you would call us yesterday, she didn't have a spare minute at the desk. Yeah. So I can't, yeah. that's not a promise I can make. Well, as far as the effort goes, we'll make every effort to see right. if we can accommodate that. And, and part of the effort is talking to the secretary. The secretary says, I'm just going to make a call. You made your effort. The answer was no. But again, give me suggested wording for the policy, how you would like to see that in the policy. Every that it doesn't effort. obligate us. Right, but it does kind of say that in the policy. Yeah. Right? No, I would love the word effort in the policy because it's showing an effort on your part. Whether it be, the answer might be because the secretary is too busy, the answer might be because the drivers are on vacation, the answer might be the drivers are at a wedding. <laughs> I don't need to know that information. Well, no. But the answer, but you made the effort and you call back and you say, we tried and no, it's not possible. That's all. Because right. I, I feel like all the other COAs are doing that, mm -hmm. no matter what their circumstances, whether they have you know, per diem driver. But I feel or, that we do that too. Again, we've made accommodations, which we yes. discussed. So it's not that we're not doing that. We're just, it hasn't always worked in your favor, I guess, is what and I'm saying. One other thing on my part, um, because I can't shop at most places, um, I would love to go to the health food store, but that's not possible either. Um, so Market Basket is my best bet. Mm -hmm. And I know that last time I went to Market Basket, the next time I called, I was not spoken with very nicely, shall I say, because I took too long. They even knew the number of bags of groceries that I bought. And I said, it was six weeks that I haven't been shopping. Mm -hmm. Nobody shops. My boys, my boys live out of state. They only come home on weekends. There's nobody shopping but me. And I can't get there. I can't call Sarah because they're not dependent. I can't always depend on the time they're going to pick me up. And if I'm buying frozen yogurt or any of the frozen items, they stay for a while, but not in the summer. So that's why I don't go with Serta. So that's why I really need the, the, the COA van. And I did tell the driver, I'll be you know, getting in and out of market basket in and out. But I also have concern that day, and not to get into specifics with anybody else again, is it was two hours at market basket. And we were transporting other people that day. Yeah, another so, person. I did right, right. So the timing, I mean, so the driver yeah. didn't know, do I wait for you? Do I go there? Then, then right. the driver doesn't want to leave. Then, oh my god, you're standing there with ice cream. That's not fair to you. You know what I mean? So I think then we're going to need to put a time limit on. I mean, I, I yeah. I'm not going to say 30 minutes, that's not practical, but I don't think that two hours is practical either. Yeah, I think it was an hour and a half, but I assume it's here. Yeah, but I did say to him, I don't know exactly, I don't mention anything. No, at least not. I know where, I know when, and I know who. Right. And I did say, I prefer you take that person home and yeah. come back for me, because I would definitely not be done within 45 minutes. I definitely won't be done. So he didn't do that. He waited for me to figure it. But it's at the driver's discretion too. I, I'm not going to second guess the driver because we're not here. No, no, no. You know, I, I, I wasn't even going to say that, that as happened. a favor to me. Right. But I think so. I think that you're right. That yeah, absolutely, we can take you to market basket. But I think that we need to put a realistic time limit on it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just fair to everybody involved. Had you been the only one on the bus that day, that's a different ballgame. But because we were juggling other people, we don't want to yeah. make anybody wait because then we get complaints that people had to wait. Yeah, I actually did book it on the same day as that person goes, because that person goes to pay. Yeah, so no specifics. I, yeah, yeah, I don't want to, no, you know, I don't know names, but I do, I did know that, and I'm trying to, like, even when I know that I'm first, I get dropped <coughs> off from my appointment, drop somebody else off for this, comes back and gets me, and wants to take me home. I say, no, I'll wait with you for the next person. I just think it's a waste of mileage, it's a waste of gas, I don't mind waiting, I always have a book to read. So I always say, no, I'll, I'll wait with you. It's not a big deal. No, 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 I can take you home. I understand. Thank you. I appreciate right, it. Right, they don't want you to wait. Yeah, they don't want me right, to wait. And, and I'm okay with it. I, you know, I appreciate the ride, and I just think it's a ridiculous waste of gas. Wait. Okay, great. Waste of mileage. So I, I will wait. Move on. Okay. Yes. Um, 
We've been at this for 30 minutes now. I think we've addressed everything that we need to be addressed on this. Um, we will discuss. We will discuss the with the advisory board and the uh, and Heather um, on this is issues, and we'll see what we can resolve. Awesome. Uh, otherwise than that, we've been going at right this for, for 30 minutes. It's the longest so. meeting we've ever had. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I said, I know it ought to be out there at 10. I'd like to uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. And addressing, and thank you for addressing your concerns with us. Uh, and again, like I said, we will discuss this and review and, it. We're going to. We, we're going to review the policies also, yeah. and we'll discuss that also, and we'll make make a uh, suggestions to them. We're not going to make. We can't change any of the policies. It's all up to them. So. And again, again, that person who has refused transportation, um, we'll do a little re-education at the desk. If you have them call back in, we'll get that situated. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Matt. Thank you for listening. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to have you. Now you need style. No, no, I can use style. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Okay, we should get back to our regular Hi, agenda here. <laughs> Polly. Hi, Pauline. Sir, I'm late. Uh, no. Did you work this morning? No, I had a doctor's appointment. Oh. We're not discussing specifics. We're not here for that. <laughs> no. Okay. I am um, back to the agenda. Oh, I you. I know. I don't know how to set it up with you. <laughs> I can't yeah, well, you know. <laughs> She can hear it. She can't find it, huh? She can hear it. Go so in the garbage, it was in the sink, dispose or whatever. Okay, here we go. So we did move that ahead and we will off camera later have other discussions. Okay, old business, custodian update. I was so happy to come in here and see, can I say his yes, name? And to see Gary. I know Gary because he's done a lot of volunteer work in town and he's always done above and beyond anything that anybody else has to do. I mean, there are other wonderful people here in town, but he's fantastic. I don't even know his last name. I just know him from seeing him around. So what does this say here? After a long summer and many concerns regarding the cleanliness of the building, on Monday, August 7th, that was just this week, Okay, we welcomed full-time custodian Gary Mello, a town resident. The board would like to take this opportunity to oh. thank select right down the yeah, get this selectman Gasper for making this issue a priority and recognizing the need for this position here at the COA. Yesterday I went to eat at uh, Cam's in town and Mr. Gasper came in all dressed up in that but he was busy with his gentleman but as I was leaving I caught his eye he caught my eye and I threw him a kiss and he threw me a kiss and later I will explain to him why I threw him a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that, so. He's probably wondering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah well he, he knows he has to be good because I taught him in fifth grade. Oh, so, yeah. so he, he, he has, has to respect you. He has to. He has no choice. Yeah. No, he does have a choice. Um, okay, so did you want to add, add anything about that, Heather? No. About Gary? No? Does anybody have any questions about Gary? No, ma'am. Uh, and I, I want to say just one other thing, and I hope it's okay, but it's without, um, you know, I won't mention any names, but a friend of mine did, you know, express a concern about the bathrooms areas. Today, another person came out and said, Whoa, this looks really fantastic. You know, nice. Uh, yeah, no one's fault. People were trying to keep up and do the best they can. Yeah. But the difference is seen now with a new person on board. Cool. Okay, Christmas in July, sponsored by PJ Keating. Oh my god. I'm gonna let you talk about it. Oh my god. First of all, I didn't want to go. 
because I was afraid that they were going to take us on these things and I'd be riding here and then the van would fall over and I'd be dead. And if it was my turn to die, I just didn't want to take a whole bunch of innocent people with me, you know. So, but of course, I wouldn't have been their turn to die too. But anyways, I decided, no, I came in here and I said, no, uh, I'm not going. And Heather says, if you take your name off, we can't put you back on because, you know, somebody else wants the space. I said, okay, let me think about this. So, um, prior to the <coughs> actual field trip, the two uh, drivers went and did a dry run. So I called Diane, uh, Diane never did, um, Mr. Roger at home and myself, and I said, I want the exact truth. I want to know everything. I want to know everything to do. So they gave me details. They told me I'd be very safe. So I was like, okay, you know. So I got on the van. They gave us a tour. First of all, I never knew. I knew PJ Keating was there. I never knew the size of it. I, I saw a few trees, and you know, I, I just never thought about it, you know. We went in. It, it was a beautiful tour on, on roads that were not paved, but they were smooth enough. Um, and we went over to a, a lookout point, just like they do at big parks and everything. And I stood there in total amazement. It was gorgeous. If you can think of a bunch of rocks being gorgeous, it was, what a view. You, it was a mile long, at least 50 feet deep, and then the water was another 30 feet deep. Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's 500 It's actually below sea level. Mm -hmm. There's pictures on the front of your newsletter. I saw uh -huh. the pictures, they were gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. it was a wonderful time. The, the gentleman on the bus explained everything to us. Uh, on the way back down to the area where they fed us, um, there were machinery, there was machinery that they showed us and told us how it was used in the past and hopefully someday in the future and what all the big trucks that are coming in and out, what they're all about and where things are coming from, like rocks from other areas have to come here to be processed into sand or little rocks or whatever they do with big rocks. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so to make a long story short, they, uh, I'm already going over, um, they took us down to a picnic area where they had the most delicious uh, barbecue chicken, ribs to like die for, cornbread, beans, potato salad, wow. and there was a man there dressed in a big red suit and he kept saying ho 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 because it was Christmas in July and the ho 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 man gave us a little bag and in the little bag were all kinds of useful items like um I always need Kleenex, see Kleenex, uh, there was a thing of Kleenex, there was a crossword book, there were sunglasses, there, there was, I have dry skin, some nice uh, dry skin <laughs> lotion, uh, sanitizer, all useful things. And it was a wonderful, wonderful field trip. And I've been on many field trips, especially through the school, and um, and those were nice too, but this was fantastic. Mm. It was a uh, Kushner's own Grand Canyon. You know, really, it was very, very nice. And I have been to the Grand Canyon, and this was awesome. Yeah. It was so, Santa. It was probably the hottest day of the year. Yeah. And um, I don't know what else I can say about that. Um, only. Oh, people have said to me, because like, they've been talking a lot about it, oh, are they going to do it again? When is it going to happen again? I don't know if they'll ever do it again. People have also asked me, uh, um, you know, any private tours that group, small groups can get together? I said, I don't really know, but I've already gotten to go, so I don't really care. You know, so <laughs> I do care about others, but, you know, it was awesome. So that's it. Did I do all right? Do I have to say anything else? You can do it there. There you go. All right. Glasses on so I can see the next part. Um, update on the handicap accessible doors. Uh, they haven't been installed yet and we do not have an update but we will talk about that next month. So, and uh, handicap accessible means you just touch the button and it opens up. Yeah. Good. Okay. On the new business, title grant application, strong women, strong bones. We have once again applied for a $5,000 Title III grant of Coastline to offset the cost of Strong Women, Strong Bones program. Um, they're going to make a decision in the middle of August, and Title III has supported this program for the past 10 years. Yeah. And the program was around before that, too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the young lady is wonderful who runs this program. Thanks for the memories. 
August 30th, not October 30th, August 30th, <laughs> we are having a summer barbecue. It's on a Wednesday, and it's sp sponsored by Coastline Services, and there are flyers here at the Council on Aging for anyone who in town who's interested. Come over to the council, pick up a flyer. Um, you do have to sign up. Um, what do the flyers look like? They look like this. I'll, you people can see it, and I'll hold it up for the people there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's the end of summer barbecue, August 30th. Okay. Um, there is a two dollar per person suggest suggested voluntary donation. But August 9th, which is today, correct? You can um, start signing up. Is it residents only? No. Okay. The only time we do the residency requirement is when it's sponsored by Mr. Kelly. Okay. okay. The Ghost Bike Memorial. Have this going to talk about that. Are there flyers like this out there? Has no. 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 Um, okay. This is not from us. Um, we are supporting this. This is from the Mass Bike Association. Sandra from the library is the driving force. She has been amazing behind this. So it'll be in memory of the gentleman who was killed in our parking lot on December 22nd. Okay. So I gave you a little history of what the ghost bike looks like. It's not going to look like the one in the picture. Um, other memorials in the state are, the ghost bike is chained to a tree and there may be a little plaque. It didn't work aesthetically for us and kind of for what they were going for. So it's going to be, uh, Dan Menard had a great suggestion. It's going to be a fence post and somehow the bike is going to kind of be suspended in the air with the memorial plaque that the family is they're working on the wording currently. It should be dedicated sometime in the middle of September, knock on wood. So just stay tuned, but I just wanted you to know what the memorial is all about, what it looked like. It, it's it's a nice tribute. I've seen them around the, the bikes, it, yeah. what people have been doing, like decorating the front lawns, and they'll take an old bicycle, they'll paint it green, blue, mm -hmm. whatever, and they put flowers and whatever. Yes. Yeah, that it's, would it's be. Very th I, I know it won't be that, but you know, if you can visualize, right. have you, if you, anybody's ever seen it, um, it is. It, it's that. This here is excellent idea. It makes a great memorial. And the group that um, is behind us, they've agreed to handle the maintenance in front of the selectmen, so they will handle upkeep maintenance. It won't fall onto the town of the taxpayers. I'm just going to encourage the board to attend the dedication ceremony. We don't have that date yet, but I, I would, it would be great for everybody to be there just in support. And before we close out this meeting, um, I would like people to know that we have our August newsletter and the September one should be coming on the I have it, okay. Everybody should have September yeah. Mm -hmm. But my whole purpose is to let people know, I'm sure it's here, is to let people know that we have newsletters. And people need to um, stop in and they need to get our newsletters. They're always coming up to date. This is the August one. This one will be out shortly on the desk shortly. Um, Again, there are pictures of Santa and the um, group of volunteers from uh, PJ Keating on the front. Uh, talk about all our trips on the back. And we have so many programs going on here in the Krishna. Um, games that you can just come in and play, like Greedy Dice, Left, Right, Santa, Hand and Foot. We can do a painting and take it home that day. There's a Don Who Travel Group. The New Bedford Garden Club, Cribbage League, um, Cribbage Drop-In Games, Support Group if you've lost a loved one, uh, the Nutty Knitters, and they're not really nutty, but they're just kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. And Needle Arts. Again, we have senior groups like from St. Anthony's, St. Teresa's, Mount Carmel. Um, and you can stop in at any of these groups and the people are friendly, they're welcoming. Um, we also have a lot of um, exercise programs. I can't even begin to tell you. We we have offer so much here at the Council on Aging and it's all in our newsletters and our newsletters are here. Are there anywhere else in town? They are post office, Rochelle's, Scuttlebutt's, library, credit union, and a house. Okay, so they are around. Yeah, they are, they are around. Alright, so um, I hope people will take advantage of picking up a newsletter and taking part at our Council on Aging, and um, nice friendly people here, always willing to help out or give you information on where you can get the help that you need. 
And um, amen. Can I pick you back up with that? Oh, yes. So yeah. I, I really think we need to do some staff appreciation. Um, we have taken on a lot this past year. We now own the Senior Tax Work Off Program. We have a wonderful travel program. Jan Barrett has just done a phenomenal job. Some of the trips are in the Eddie's. Yesterday was the first day to sign up for fall trips. By 7.55, we had a line in the parking lot for people to sign up. And I just want to give a shout out to our morning receptionist, Jan Fortin, who hand I was crazed and she handled it like a champ. We did $3,000, which turned into almost 100 trips were booked in a two hour period wow. yesterday. And, and it, she, it was seamless. She was so calm, it was just seamless. So just a shout out to Jan Barrett for organizing them, and Jan Fortin for handling the logistics of it. Our team, we couldn't do it without them. So we are, we are who we are because of our team. So just want to give a little plug. Thank you, Heather. So I guess uh, we need to talk about our next meeting. And it's on Wednesday, September 13th at 10 a.m. Here with the Council on Aging. Guests are welcome. People with concerns are welcome. Just let Heather know so she can put you on the agenda. And positive um, feedback will take too. <laughs> yeah, we'll take positive feedback. Yeah, today's meeting was a combination of positive feedback and things that can help us and help the community. Um, and that's it. So may I have a motion to adjourn this motion meeting? To adjourn. Second. Okay. So we will add two people again, Deb and Paula. And over and out.